Hi everybody, this will be our first lecture on quantum mechanics. Uh, it is to be a, an introduction, but uh, I'll take a more axiomatic route. So we will first deal with Hilbert spaces, which is the mathematical framework in which uh, the quantum dynamics is, is built. In. So I recommend this book. Uh, the Modern Quantum Mechanics by Sakurai, and for uh, more introductory functional analysis and Hilbert spaces, uh, for those who want to have a more rigorous mathematical treatment of Hilbert spaces, I recommend this, Kreisig, and it's a very good book. I'll, I'll put the, the references on description of this video. So let's go. Let's start about Hilbert space, uh, talking about Hilbert spaces. Uh, we also will, will describe the Dirac uh, notation or Dirac's notation. So first let's start talking about Hilbert spaces. I will not be mathematically rigorous here. So Forgive me if you, you have a, a more profound mathematical background. Uh, let's see. Okay, I guess the board is visible now. So, what is a Hilbert space? It's a key ingredient in quantum mechanics. Well, a Hilbert space is basically uh, a complex vector space. It is a complex vector space with dimension n. You have n independent axes, let's say, and a vector is, is, is built by uh, complex components, okay? So Hilbert space is a complex vector space. Uh, and it, it, is, uh, it has the property of a, a norm. It is a normed space. Which means vectors has a norm defined by some, in this case, an inner product. So, inner product. Or scalar product. But in this case, it is a complex product. Complex product of vectors. So, uh, let's start with Dirac's notation because everything will be built using that notation, which I guess simplifies things a lot. So, Dirac's notation. You have a, a space where vectors, column vectors, are known as cats. So, you have a cat space a column vectors denoted by this symbol. Suppose psi. This is a vector in Hilbert space. It is a column vector. It has it has n components, so psi one, two, and so on. J till you get the n component. So it, it is a, a column vector. It has n rows by one column. Okay, this is a cat. This is the notation for a cat. Okay, and also there is a a, a dual space 
which is called the bra space or uh, a some kind of complex conjugate of this it's a, in a sense it is, it is the hermitian conjugate okay. it is denoted this way okay. so this is the notation for a bra a bra vector a cat vector this is a La, uh, row vector. It has one row by n columns. But let, let us see what is what we we can obtain this object from this one. Okay, so let's go. This symbol denotes usually the transpose conjugate or the Hermitian conjugate HC and when you do this operation you need to transpose a matrix and take the complex conjugate of every component of that matrix. So the transpose conjugate of this vector, which is in a sense a matrix with one column and n rows, will give a matrix with n row n columns and one row. So this is the psi and you get you need to Transpose the vector. Okay, it is transposed, and you need to take the complex conjugate of every one of these components. So this is a bra. <clears throat> Direct noted that you have a lot of uh, average calculations. So the notation comes from something like this. You get a row vector, a matrix n by n. Say the n is the dimensionality of the space, and a column vector. Notice that if you multiply this way a row by a matrix by a column, you have a number. A complex number. And this expression looks like a bracketed matrix or a bra. A VA here is, is the C of the bracket. And this is a bracketed expression. So Dirac noticed that and invented this notation. So let's remember this psi is a column vector and this phi say is a row vector which is the complex conjugate of this one the complex conjugate of this one okay <clears throat> well from that we, we can define a inner product in Hilbert space. So inner product is defined this way. You take uh, the inner product of two vectors. You have two vectors in Hilbert space. And you take the bra of phi and the cat of psi, and then you'll multiply an object like this phi 1, phi 2, and so on, complex conjugates 
of the column vector representing phi multiplied by this cat vector or a column vector which has n entries or n components and by matrix multiplication you you will have phi 1 the complex conjugate of that number multiplied by psi 1 plus phi 2 multiplied by psi 2 so and so on we get this which means this is a summation over j equals 1 to the n the dimensionality of your your hilbert space phi complex conjugate multiplied by psi okay this is the inner product it is defined as the inner product in a hilbert space okay the norm of a vector is obtained by taking the inner product of a vector with itself so if you want to know the norm the size of a vector say you need to take phi is equal to psi here so you you get the, the magnitude or, or the modulus of the vector okay so if you take The inner product of a vector with itself in a Hilbert space, you get a summation from 1 to n. It, it is uh, important to say that this dimensionality of the Hilbert space can go to infinity, and maybe the Hilbert space will be continuous, continuously parameterized by a, a, a continuous variable. So need to uh, change replace this summation symbol by an integral but now consider a, a discrete Hilbert space in which you, you, you can index every component of the vector by a discrete number <clears throat> and in this case you'll have a psi j complex conjugate multiplied by psi j we know from complex analysis that this is just the modulus of that complex number. You sum up all the numbers and you get a positive real number. This is uh, greater or at least equal to zero. It, it will be equal to zero only if this vector is the null vector. In any other situation, this scalar product, this inner product in the Hilbert space, will produce a positive real number. Uh, this is this thing here is supposed to pertain to the reals, positive including zero. Okay, zero only if you you have a, a new vector here every component of the vector zero then you you get zero for the answer uh, otherwise this will be a number a real number greater than zero it's a positive number it's a positive definite so uh, this is an important property of hubert space notice also that if you take Two distinct vectors, the product in the reverse order is the uh, complex conjugate of this product or the transposed conjugate of this number. Remember, when you multiply matrices A, B, C, and so on, and you take, let's say, till C. Okay. Uh, and you take the Hermitian conjugate, you need to reverse the orders, take the transpose conjugation. So, <clears throat> if you pick up this vector, 
and this other vector and take the transposed conjugate. Okay, it is uh, as a matter of fact uh, a product, scalar product of these two things. And when you take the Hermitian conjugate, you need to reverse order. So you get the psi here, the psi here, transpose conjugate, and you get the phi, this, phi here, transpose conjugate, and this is the bra, this is the cat vector related to the objects psi and phi. So it is proven that the complex conjugate or the transpose conjugate of this object uh, corresponds to the inner product in the reverse order. Okay, this is important to notice. <clears throat> well, a Hilbert space has two important properties. Okay. I'll say properties. Fundamental properties. Uh, in any uh, vector space, you can define a basis. Suppose you, you have a basis of a vector alpha. And it's the uh, symbolic representation for uh, a set of vectors, one, two, and so on, you'll be n vectors. You'll have n vectors in an n-dimensional Hilbert space. Okay, so you can always find a basis in a Hilbert space for which. The first property, number one, first property is, uh, is called the orthonormality of the basis. Okay. So, if you, can, if you pick one of the vectors, say the beta, and you multiply by alpha, you'll get Kronecker delta, which means it gives to the alt one the unity. If alpha is equal to beta, which means if you pick up uh, alpha equals to one and beta equals to one, or alpha equals two and beta equals two, so if alpha equals to beta and you get zero if you choose distinct vectors in a base so if alpha is distinct from beta you will get zero this is encoded by this symbol this mathematical symbol it's a delta of alpha and beta and this is the Kronecker delta Kronecker delta. So the basis is orthogonal and more orthonormal because you can eventually uh, set the size of the basis vectors to unity. This means that each basis vector has a size of one, but each of these vectors is orthogonal to any other ones. So, in a Hilbert space, a first property, the important property we need, is the orthonorm orthonormality of the basis vectors. Okay, this is the first property, a very relevant property. The second one, the second, is called the completeness or Closure, okay, completeness of the basis. If you 
sum up over, say, alpha from 1 to the dimensionality of the Hilbert space, the exterior product or a tensor product of each alpha with itself in this way, you get the identity matrix, the identity matrix, the dimensionality, and of course, it's a square matrix of dimension n. This product, uh, it seems odd at first uh, for, for a, a, a beginner. You, you may find it uh, awkward, but notice that you're multiplying. When you multiply in this order, vectors, this is a column vector, this is a, a row vector, and this is a column vector, you are multiplying an object which is n by 1, and this is 1 by n, and we know from matrix algebra, the inner indexes must be equal, and the outer indexes must uh, produce the dimensionality of the result. So in this case, you have a matrix n by n, okay? So if you pick up all the basis vectors from 1 to n, multiplying in, the, in this fashion, which means in the tensor product of alpha with itself, you'll get the identity matrix, okay? Uh, and this is a very important relation because in many situations, you need to insert the identity to make calculations and you can use the resolution of the identity using a complete basis in a Hilbert space. So this is, a, a, is it's called a resolution of the identity also. So there are two important properties. The orthonormality of vectors in a Hilbert space or the basis vectors in a Hilbert space and the completeness of the basis, which means you can always represent the identity matrix by uh, a summation or an, uh, of tensor products of the basis vectors, each with itself here, okay? So let, let me talk a little more about this thing, okay? If you want to multiply a phi bar by a psi, not in an inner product, but as a exterior product or a tensor product, you are doing this thing. Phi 1, phi 2, and so on, to get the n component. And here you will multiply by the complex conjugate of the components of this in a row vector form. And if you multiply this, you need to see that this row multiplying this column will give the uh, element of the matrix in the position 1, 1 of this matrix. If you multiply the row 1 by the column 2, you will get the row 1, row 1, column two of the mate the resulting matrix. So we'll get a phi one multiplied by a psi two and so on and so on to get sorry my kid it's, it's, a, it's a tough time so my kid is talking a lot. Then you get all the components of this matrix. You get the phi n, psi n, complex, complex conjugate, and so on. And you get the matrix, an n by n matrix. I'm sorry about that. But I guess it's, it's it, it can be understood this way. Well, so this is an exterior product, okay? As an example, so 
suppose uh, dimensionality of Hilbert space is three. Okay, a, a Hilbert space of dimension three. You have three basis vectors. One, two, and three. Okay. Which can be represented in, a, in, in an easy way like this. One, zero, zero. These are the basis vectors. Zero, one, zero. And this, zero, zero, one. Okay. We can use this basis. There are another basis. For, for instance, I can choose another one. Uh, it will be an, an exercise to show all the properties we'll do fine for another basis, but uh, for instance, consider this one, and you'll do the math with this one. 1 over the square root of 2, 1, the imaginary unit, 0, this side 2, uh, uh, 2 prime here is 1 over the square root of 2, 1 minus i. Notice the components of complex are, are complex in this way. And psi 3, it's the same. It corresponds to a rotation, which, which we will talk about later. Um, 3 prime is equal to this one. It's a, it's a kind of rotation in a, in a complex space. But um, this is another basis. This is one basis. These three vectors form one complete basis. It is a set of vectors, one, two, three, which form a complete basis for expanding any vector in Hilbert space. This other basis here is another basis. And also these bases form a complete set for expanding any vector in Hilbert space. It is possible to transform this representation into this one, into that one, and, and, and go back from one to another, to the other. But now I'll, I'll consider this one, which is simpler to do the math. So consider these three vectors, okay? Notice that it's easy to see. If you multiply the one by itself, this vector, vector number one by itself, you'll get one, zero, zero, multiply one, zero, zero, you'll get one multiplied by the one here, you get one plus zero multiplied by zero, which gives you zero, nothing, and zero, you add up, zero multiplied by zero, you get one plus zero plus zero, and the result is one, okay? So if you take the inner product of a basis vector with itself, you get the, the size of this vector, which is one, okay? But if you multiply this vector by any other, say two, we don't need to make all the calculations, you can do that. But if uh, we'll do a few things just to, to prove the point. So if you, if you multiply this one by this one, You'll have a 0, 1, 0 multiplied by 1, 0, 0, and you'll get 0 multiplied by 1, which gives you 0, plus 1 multiplied by 0, which gives you 0, plus 0. So this will produce 0. So uh, the basis, all, all the vectors satisfy this relation. A product of an alpha with a beta will give you a Kronecker delta, or the uh, symbol, which means 1 if alpha is equal to beta, and 0 if alpha is distinct from beta. Okay? So this is the, the orthonormality of this basis. Okay? Another interesting thing is completeness. So I'll make one product, or two. You can do the rest. Oh, multiply in the exterior product form. You'll have a column vector here multiplied by a line vector here. The other 
basis I, I pointed out here, it's a, a little bit tricky because you have complex numbers here, so you need to take a complex conjugate and so on. But uh, calculations are straightforward for matrix multiplication. You have this thing here. One multiplied by one, you get the first element here. One multiplied by zero, this one. This one multiplied by this zero, this one. Second row, multiply all columns, you get second row, all columns. Zero, multiply by one, zero, 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 and so on. So you'll get this number one here. If you multiply the two by itself in a tensor product, you'll have a matrix, which means this, this row multiplying all the columns will give the first row here, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 here, 1 multiplied by 1, it gives you 1 here, 0 here, and so on. If you add up this thing, you can, you can do the other one. If you add up summation over alpha going from 1 to 3, which is the dimensionality of the Hilbert space of these vectors, you'll get, notice, 1, 1 in the second uh, row and the second column, and the 3 multiplied by the 3. You'll get another one here. If you, if you add up everything, you'll get 3 by 10 by 6. 3 by 3 identity matrix. Okay? This is the, the result. So, it satisfies completeness. It satisfies uh, the orthonormality relation. It's a complete basis. This way, you can expand any vector, say a psi vector, as a summation of components, say, summed over alpha from 1 to the n, uh, the dimensionality of Hilbert space, the alpha component in that direction. In an analogous way, you can expand any vector in three-dimensional real space as a sum of components in the x, y, and z directions. But here you can have n arbitrary n directions in this space, and the components of the vectors are not real. So this way, you, you have a vector which pertain to the complex dimensionality and the complex vectors with dimensionality n. And if you would uh, pictorically represent such a vector in a Hilbert space, suppose you have multiple directions, one, two, there are another, other, other directions between the two and the alpha, and the n direction, you will have a vector here in the Hilbert space, a psi, which is in this case a column vector, which has a psi alpha component, a psi one component, this axis, psi two component, projected to this axis, and a psi n component. So in Hilbert space, you can project a vector into a basis. This basis is a set of orthogonal vectors, which allow, you, allow us to express any vector as a superposition of components in each direction. But it's important to notice that uh, it's, it's distinct from uh, real vectors. Each of these numbers, it's uh, just a pictorial representation because each of these psi numbers here are complex numbers. 
So, uh, as a matter of fact, it's, it's like the H of these directions has two sub uh, directions one which is the real axis and the other is the imaginary axis so you have uh, the real part uh, along this direction the imaginary part the real part imaginary part real part imaginary part so if you, if you take this component it is in the direction of this vector is one here you can represent this and alongside this direction one you have a psi one which has a real part and it has an imaginary part so this is psi one and, and the same for all the all the other numbers here you can have for instance uh, psi two which has a real and imaginary part suppose psi two is totally real is but psi1 is a complex, it has a real part, an imaginary part, or a modulus in the, in the phase. So this is what we mean by a, a Hilbert space. It is a space, and there would be with a complete basis in the sense that you can always expand a complex vector in terms of that basis. Uh, and, of course, you can change the representation as well as analogously we do for vectors in um, in real space in three-dimensional space you can pick up a vector which is an invariant object and uh, rotate the coordinate system or change the representation from cartesian to spherical coordinates the components of the vector will be distinct in one representation and the other representation, but the object itself is the same. In this way, we, you can choose an older basis, say one prime, uh, two prime here. I don't know, it's, it's a pictorial again. I don't know how this connects to the previous basis, one, two, three, alpha, and uh, this is another the prime the prime basis so you get a uh, one prime the two prime then the uh, n prime okay you have the same number of basis vectors the dimensionality of space doesn't change but the components of this object which is invariant in hilbert space will produce uh, distinct uh, components say uh, psi one prime, a psi two prime, and so on. And there is a way, we will talk about that later. Uh, there's a way to connect these things, which means how can I transform from one, re one representation to the other? We need to talk about that. Psi one, two, and so on, which is the representation in the alpha basis the components in this representation, I, I, I need to find out what look like what looks like the psi one prime and so on in the new alpha prime basis. This is a basis transformation. You can do that. But the object, the psi in the Hilbert space, is invariant. Why do we need to talk about Hilbert spaces in quantum mechanics? Because the fundamental object in quantum mechanics, which represents the physical state, is a vector in an abstract space, which is called, which is a Hilbert space. This Hilbert space has a dimensionality n, which corresponds to the number of allowed states, the accessible states to the physical system. For instance, you could consider uh, spin, uh, spin half particles. So the Hilbert space has a dimension of two. And there are two possible states, the spin up and the spin down states. And a particle can, uh, relative to some axis, can have uh, or a spin down or a spin up or be in a superposition, 
So in Hilbert space, in this case, okay, let's let's do some example here. Suppose you have n equals to two. It corresponds to uh, two level systems. Spin half. Your physical system, a particle, you are describing the spin of the particle, will have, will be represented by vector with two components. The Hilbert space will have two directions, which is up and down, or level one, level two, you can name it wherever you want. And it's I. You must remember that each component is a complex number, but uh, pictorically, you say psi is here. You have a complex number projected to this direction and a complex number in the other direction. They are orthogonal in the Hilbert space sense, but usually they are not needed to be orthogonal in real space, in the space of. Uh, X, Y, and Z, and, and so on. So, uh, Hilbert space is the arena where the dynamics of physical systems evolve in time. And the system must be represented, we'll talk about a little more, it will be represented by its sign. The vector in the Hilbert space, the system is represented by this object, okay? We need to say a little bit more about operators or observables, physical, physical observables, quantities which we can measure. We need to talk about evolution, transformation, and, and all that is, is represented usually by a rotation of this thing, this thing in Hilbert space. Uh, you, you can, as, as time passes, this object evolves, you can rotate in Hilbert space. So evolution, we need to talk about time, temporal evolution. We need to talk about symmetries. Uh, but Hilbert space is I guess the most important properties were built here. I need to say, <clears throat> when you go from a discrete Hilbert space to a continuous and n going to infinity and the indexing variable going to the reals, for instance, you have a, a continuous Hilbert space. And in this case, for for continuous Hilbert spaces, you'll have these properties, the, the following properties. The integral over some continuous parameter, instead of the summation, you'll get an integral. But this identity is overly dense. You have many ones in, di in diagonal, and between two rows, there are infinitely many other rows. So this is a symbolic approach. You can write this, okay? And of course, the continuous representation of the Kronecker delta is the Dirac delta, so you'll get these things. These are the properties for a Hilbert space in a continuous variable indexing the directions in the Hilbert space. Also, we can have a, perhaps partly continuous, partly discrete Hilbert space. So in the discrete part, you get a summation here, 
and in the continuous getting integral and and also here for the discrete eventually you have a chronic delta and for the continuous part you you have a, a direct delta that's that's it but i'll i'll discuss it a little bit more these properties in continuous variables it's important in quantum mechanics because a basis can be representing, for instance, position, momentum, um, electric, um, and, and other variables here. Position, momentum, and, and other things. Okay? So, uh, the Hilbert space is a fundamental object. It's, it's the mathematical arena where the stranger things happening in quantum mechanics occur. The arena where the game is, is played, it's the Hilbert space. So it's very important to understand Hilbert spaces, its properties, and how to work out the algebra of brass and cat. You need to do that. Um, See you next time.